Azam. And in the time of Walid bin Marwan, in the time, the lifetime of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, there was a small earthquake. Naam, listen to me. There was a small earthquake in Medina. <clears throat> and because of this earthquake, the grave of Rasulullah and the rooftop on the top of the grave of Rasulullah fell down. Yes, this is an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. It notes, it states that there was a, the roof that was on top of the grave of Rasulullah fell down, came crashing down. And then when it crashed down, suddenly a pair of legs became visible. Suddenly, a pair of legs became visible, and the people became very amazed. And the people saw that, and they thought that that was, that was the leg of Rasulullah. As the hadith states, that Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he became bewildered. He was bewildered. He couldn't understand, are these the legs of Rasulullah or what? And then Zubair, uh, Zubair Abdullah ibn Zubair, he said, no, these are the legs of Umar. These are the legs of Umar, meaning that the grave, when the, when the roof had fallen on the grave, it had cracked the grave of Umar and his legs were shown. How many years was it since the death of Umar? Tell me how many years? 30 years. More than that. And the grave had not eaten his body. An authentic hadith in Bukhari. Check it out. In the chapter of Janazah. In the chapter of Janazah, listen to what he said. He said his legs were shown and these are the legs of Umar. How can the earth eat up a man who was a true man? How can the earth eat up a man? For we, uh, uh, when, when Umar was alive, the earth would tremble at the mere, mere sound of Umar's feet. How can it now eat up Umar? No, it truly cannot. Do you not see how great Umar was? How a true man he was? Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he states in authentic hadith in Tirmidhi, he says, ma zilna a'izzatan, we have never ceased to be honored, we have never ceased to be powerful since the Islam of Umar. We have never ceased to be powerful since the Islam of Umar. And it's for this reason, what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, please me, make Islam stronger by the Islam of either one of these two people. And he mentioned Umar, and he mentioned Abu Jahl. My brothers and sisters in Islam, describe Umar to me. Describe Umar to me, how was Umar? He was a tall man. The companions say that he was a tall man until when, when, when if he would walk between the people, you could see him because he was so tall. And he was bald. Not completely bald, but very bald. He was tall, he was bald, and was he fat? Was he fat? No, he wasn't fat. He was very, very, very thin. Very, very, very thin. He didn't have any six packs. He didn't body build. He wasn't a Mr. Universe, but he was a true man. Because true men are not, are not described by these criteria. These are not the criteria to describe who true men are, brothers and sisters in Islam. These things which we have set up for ourselves, by saying the people who are more stronger, by saying people who are more beautiful, if you can enter yourself in the 10 most sexiest people as they say, then you are truly a man. As the women say, oh what a man. And the legs go weak thinking about this man. This is what people think is a man. But Umar was none of this. The, the women would run away when Umar would come. They wouldn't say, oh what a man. <laughs> they would run away, isn't that true? Subhanallah, they would run away. And the shaitan would run away, the imam al mufsidin the imam of the fitna causes, shaitan himself would run away and take a different path. Such was Umar, a true man, a true man. And don't you remember how Umar, when he had accepted Islam, what did he do? He had a shower, then he prayed, then he went to the Kaaba, and he made tawaf, and he said, if there is anyone amongst you, he said in a narration reported by Ibn Al-Athir in his book, he mentioned that Umar said, if there is anyone amongst you, if there is anyone amongst you who wants to make his mother cry, who wants to orphan his child, who wants to widow his wife, then let him follow me behind this valley. Follow me if you would, if you dare. This is Umar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Umar was not strong. He wasn't a superhuman. But what he had is strength of character and strength of Iman. 
And this is true manhood. This is true rujula. This is the rujula that is missing in our ummah. MashaAllah, we have one billion people. 500 million men. Where are the true men amongst them? Where are the true men amongst them? Show me, please. I want to see them. Because looking at them is ibadah. Speaking to them is ibadah. Being in their presence is ibadah to Allah. Because truly this religion has not been sent except upon the shoulders of men like Umar and his example.